Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at what is dynamic revenue orchestration in revenue lifecycle management. First we'll walk through a couple of concepts and then we'll go through a demo in Salesforce. Let's get going. All right, what is dynamic revenue orchestrator? DRO is designed to enhance order fulfillment within your end-to-end -end sales process. So it's going to give you a comprehensive view to see your fulfillment design and execution on a graphic UI. It's going to let you decompose your orders with all the different steps that the fulfillment has to, to track through to get a completed order. It's going to also let you decompose products as in a bill of material, right? So one product can become multiple product within the RO. And then you're going to be able to also track SLAs and Jeopardy management on those SLAs. So if you're not on track with your different fulfillment steps, you're going to be able to determine rules and determine what happens in case you're falling behind on those different rules. All right, decomposition, what does that look like in Salesforce? So on your order, as you can see on the left-hand side, you've got the list of your order products. So in this case, we've got two products, the Model 3 and a standard car. And on the right-hand side, we have the different fulfillment order products, all right? So these products decompose into the products on the right. So you're gonna get on top of your regular order products, basically your bill of material, or the different products that the source product decompose into on the right hand side. Once your fulfillment is completed, your order products create assets, but also your fulfillment order products are also gonna create their own subset of assets. So you can see which account own which fulfillment order products. The R also lets you create a fulfillment plan. So the fulfillment plan is gonna let you create different step groups. So the swim lanes that you see on the screen right now, and then within each of those swim lanes, you're gonna be able to create the different steps. The steps can have different step types. We're gonna walk through the different steps that are available, and then you can create dependencies within those steps. How do we get to that fulfillment plan? Through the fulfillment work, workspace, we're, we're gonna create fulfillment step groups, the swim lanes. For every one of those step groups, we're gonna assign scenarios. So the scenarios are gonna be a combination of products and action. So if I've got my model tree, and it's a net new ad, then we're gonna have that scenario. Maybe the scenario is different. If you're amending a model tree, then you're gonna follow different steps. So every one of your swim lane has to be assigned to a scenario to appear on your fulfillment plan. Then within every one of your step groups, you're gonna create the different steps to track your order fulfillment process, and you're gonna assign those steps to the fulfillment step groups, and you're gonna define their dependencies between every one of those steps, if there are any dependencies. The fulfillment steps have different types that are available. So they can be auto task, they can be a call out step, it could be a manual step, it could be a milestone step, or it could be a pause step. So, so every one of those has different implications if you choose them as your step types when you're creating your different steps. An auto task is gonna trigger a Salesforce flow that's gonna complete different actions upon the creation of that fulfillment step. The call out fulfillment step allows you to make a call out to an external system within DRO, so then you can call out an external system to make where the step needs to happen. When the step is complete, the system returns that information and the step is completed within the RO. A manual task is gonna be a task that you assign to a specific user within your environment. It could be a task that needs to happen in the system, outside of the system. Regardless, it's a manual task that the user will complete. And once completed, he's gonna mark his step as complete. A milestone fulfillment step is a step that's gonna have multiple dependencies and when all of the different dependencies are completed, that one will complete as well. And the pause fulfillment step is gonna stop the fulfillment when certain conditions are in place, and then you can resume when a subset of conditions are met, and then the fulfillment will continue from that point. All right, let's jump into Salesforce and have a look at what it looks like in the system. All right, so I've got a quote over here. I've got my products on it already. We're ready to create the order, and that's where all the DRO steps are going to happen. So let's take that quote, create our order. Once order is created, click through on your order. All right, so I've got my order with all my different order products. If we go to the fulfillment lines tab, so far I don't have anything. I don't have a fulfillment plan. I don't have anything but my order products, no fulfillment order products yet. Those are going to happen once I activate my order. So let's set the order to activated. All right, now that my order is active, I can refresh my screen and we'll go back to the fulfillment lines section. All right, now in the fulfillment line section, I see a couple things. I can now view the fulfillment plan on the right hand side. We'll go back there in a second. And I can also see how my different order products decompose into the fulfillment order products. Now I can select any one of those to see what products on the right 
are assigned to the products on the left. So if I click on the first one, my view on the right hand side is filtered. So I see that there's a set of wheels and doors that's assigned to the car on the left. I can uncheck, check a separate one, see that I've got doors assigned to this one. Obviously this can be as complex or as simple as you want, right? You define how a specific product decomposes and what the rules are for that decomposition to happen. So different field values on your order product could determine whether a decomposition happens or not for a given product. Now let's go and have a look at the fulfillment plan. So if I click on view fulfillment plan, I'm gonna get the view that we had on our PowerPoint there. So we've got the different swim lanes, again, assembly, car delivery, the different steps that are happening, right? So by default, the first one is gonna be in progress. Now, in this example, all of these are manual tasks that are gonna be need, need to be marked as completed manually, but obviously we could use any of the step times that we just walked through. If I hover over my step, I can see that for now we're on time. There's no jeopardy. The SLA is 30 minutes to complete that order. So it's expected to complete at a specific time given that time frame. If I click the down arrow on the step, I can now set it to complete. Once I've completed, color changes. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step is now in progress. Again, as we walk through those, we can set them to complete as we move. It was in jeopardy, but it's not anymore because we've moved on to the next one. That one is complete. And then we can walk through that entire process. And obviously that could take hours, days, depending on how complex your process is. And it could be a lot more complex than what we've got in this simple example, but it's very powerful and has a lot of flexibility so far. For any task, I can click on this. The side panel is gonna appear. I can see more details about the rule, the step type, what definition group it's part of, that it's within the car delivery, the scope, who it's assigned to, and I can see dependencies, right? So it's dependent on the manual task, attached door to car that was that came before it, and it is the dependency for a separate one, which is the final delivery of the car. Once you mark every one of your steps as complete, your plan status is also gonna update from in progress to completed now. Once that's completed, we can go back to our order. We'll see that the fulfillment plan is also marked as completed on here. All the steps have been taken and nothing else is waiting on us at this point. Now, this was the view for one specific order. If you go to the home page of the Dynamic Revenue Orchestration home page, now you can see a lot more information. First, you're gonna have your setup information that's available. So the product decomposition, Liz views the fulfillment workspace creation. That's gonna be to design those. And we're gonna make a separate video about how to design and create those. But you can also see for end users, you can see a couple different informations, right? You can see your active fulfillment plans against different orders. You could click through any one of those and see what they look like, right? So that's one of the fulfillment plans that's in progress right now. We can see it's highlighted in red because it's overdue and we're past the due date for that specific step. Go back to our home page. We can see the pending manual fulfillment tasks. We could see if there were any failures on there and we can see all the different tasks that are assigned to my user on the right hand side as well. All right, I hope this was an helpful intro to dynamic revenue orchestration. We're gonna follow up with more videos on the setup of the RO and the fulfillment plans and the product decomposition. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a good day.